hello students welcome back to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem which says that determine the required minimum thickness t of the member a b and the edge distance b of the frame if p equals to 9 kip and the factor of safety against failure is 2 the wood has a normal failure stress of 6 ksi and shear failure stress of 1.5 ksi so we are given that if this force p is equal to 9 kips we, we are asked to find this thickness of this uh, member a b and we are also required to find this distance b of uh, this joint from this particular end if the failure stress for the wood the normal failure stress for the wood is 6 ksi and the shear failure stress for the wood is 1.5 ksi so first of all we are given the factor of safety we can find the allowable stresses so we can say that the factor of safety which is equal to 2 is equal to the failure stress so we can say that the failure stress divided by the allowable stress so we can find the normal allowable stress so we can say uh, that from this formula we can say that the allowable stress the allowable normal stress for the wood will be the failure stress divided by the factor of safety which is 2 so we can say that the allowable stress is equal to now the failure stress is 6 ksi so 6 ksi from here we can say this is 6 ksi so 6 ksi divided by 2 so the allowable stress the normal allowable stress for the wood is 3 ksi and similarly using the same formula we can uh, find the shear allowable stress so again we can say that the factor of safety is the shear failure stress divided by the the shear allowable stress this is equal to 2 and from this we can say that shear allowable stress is equal to shear failure stress divided by 2 1.5 ksi divided by 2 is equal to 0 0.75 ksi now once we know this we have to find uh, since we want to find this thickness t this is the front view of that uh, mechanism of that truss so and we want to find this thickness t so so to find this thickness t we have the allowable stress and uh, we want to find the force uh, developed in this member a b so as you guys can see that if the force p is applied at point a in this direction then both a b and a c member are in compression so if they are in compression their forces must be acting towards this point a so this will be f a b and this will be f a c so let's draw the free body diagram so this will be our force p which is acting vertically downward and this will be from here to here this will be our force a b so this is f a b and similarly we will have f a c so this is f a c and they are making 30 degree with the horizontal line so here we have you guys can see this is 30 degree and this is 30 degree or we can say this is 30 degree and this is 30 degree this is 30 degree and this is 30 degree so we can say that this is this is 30 and this is 30 and similarly if we resolve these forces so we will have this one will be f a b cos of 30 and this one will be f a b sine of 30 and similarly this one will be f a c cos of 30 and this one will be f a b f a c sine of 30 so if we apply the sum of the forces in the x that must be equals to 0 towards the right is our positive x so we have this f a b cos of 30 minus f a c uh, cos of 30 so f a b cos of 30 minus f a c cos of 30 and dividing whole equation by cos of 30 we get f a b equals to f a c similarly if we apply the sum of the forces in the y equals to 0 upward direction is considered to be positive f a b sine of 30 plus f a c sine of 30 minus p 
this is equal to zero and you guys can see that this is f a b is equal to f a c so if i put f a b here instead of f a c this is f a b so this will become twice f a b sine of 30 so we can say that this is twice f a b sine of 30 and sine of 30 is 1 divided by 2 so we can say that sine of the we can say f a b is equal to p and this will cancel out and we can say that f a b is equal to p is equal to 9 kips since force p is given which is 9 kips so we can say that f a b is equal to f a c is equal to 9 kips now as you guys can see that if uh, this a b member is in compression so this joint a is going to apply um, the force on a b in this direction this was the force of a b on that joint a so the joint is going to apply the force on a b in this direction and similarly uh, this particular joint b is going to apply the force on a b in this direction and as a reaction this this a b is going to apply the force on this joint b in this direction so we can say if we consider the force of a b here at joint b so we will have the direction of f a b in this direction so it is going to apply the force on that joint b in this direction so this one will be f a b so if i draw the free body diagram of that uh, joint b So here we have that F A B here. This is that joint B. This is F A B which is equal to 9 kips. And again this F A B is making that same angle 30 degree here. So now if we resolve this F A B into its components, we will have this one will be 9 cos of 30 kips. And we will have one component in this direction and this one will be 9 sine of 30. Now we want to find this dimension B. And similarly we want to find this thickness T. So to find this thickness T first we can use um, this allowable stress, the normal allowable stress, right? So this FAB is perpendicular to the cross-sectional area of uh, this AB. So we can say that... Um, the normal allowable stress of the wood which is equal to 3 ksi so 3 ksi is 3 into 10 raised to the power 3 pound per inch square and this is equal to fab uh, so fab is 9 into 10 raised to the power 3 pounds 9 kips divided by the perpendicular area to FAB so the perpendicular uh, we can say that the cross-sectional area of this AB so the cross-sectional area of uh, this section is we can say this 3 multiplied by this thickness so 3 into T so this is 3 multiplied by T and both the units should be in inches right so 3 is in inches T must be in inches 3 T is equal to 9 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 divided by 3 into 10 raised to the power 3 this is in pounds this is in pounds per inch square remember this 10 raised to the power 3 will cancel out and this is 3 into 3 is 9 uh, 3 right so we can say that 3 t is equal to 3 and this is inch square and if i divide both sides of equation by 3 then t is equal to 1 inch so t is equal to 1 inch so the thickness of that a b member should be one inch so this thickness should be one inch in order to have the failure stress of 6 ksi similarly to find that uh, dimension b here to find this dimension b uh, we must consider this component and we must consider this area right since while well, uh, if if we want to find this dimension b we must consider this cross-sectional area because we need to have this b in the equation in order to find it right so in order to find this we must consider the shear stress along this cross section 
and to to find um, to to use the shear stress equation we must consider the cross section area along this line so let's say if i consider the cross section area along this line so we can say that this is that section aa right and we have that 9 cos of 30 component here so the shear stress or we can say that the shear force will be in this direction so let's say this is vaa so now if we apply the sum of the forces in the x that must be equals to 0 towards the right is our positive x considering this free body diagram so we can say that plus vaa minus 9 cos of 30 this is equal to 0 and the shear force is equal to 9 cos of 30 and now the allowable shear stress is 0 0.75 ksi so we can say that the allowable shear stress is equal to vaa divided by the cross sectional uh, the area which is parallel to this 9 cos of 30 so the area parallel to that 9 cos of 30 is this area which is 3 times b or we can say this 3 times b or b times 3 so we can say this is 3 multiply by b and this is equal to 0 0.75 ksi so 0 0.75 into 10 raised to the power 3 pound per inch square now we know vaa which is 9 cos of 30 divided by 3b and this will be in this is in ksi so this is into 10 raised to the power 3 pounds sorry this is in kips right this is in kips 9 cos of 30 kips so kilo pounds right so 9 cos of 30 into 10 to the power 3 is equal to 0 0.75 into 10 raised to the power 3 so from rearranging this equation we can say that 3b is equal to 9 cos of 30 into 10 raised to the power 3 pounds this is in pounds Ten to the power three cancels out, and we can say that nine cos of thirty divided by zero point seven five. This gives us ten point three nine two. Pound units will cancel out, and we will have the units in inches square. Now this three is in inches as well. Dividing both sides by 3, we will get B in inches. So, this answer divided by 3 gives us 3.464. So, 3.464 inches. So, this dimension, this dimension or we can say the distance of this joint B from that edge should be, um, 3.464 inches in order to have the shear failure stress of 1.5 ksi with a factor of safety of 2. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibbler.